his uh, gifts and ask them to donate them to someone in Philadelphia. And again, we'd like to extend Scotty our thanks for that good gesture. You know, it's all part of the game. Uh, how many times do we recall during the regular season that Clark and Bowman were um, on the opposite side of things? But uh, when you really get down to it, uh, they're great human beings. Fair to be having a delay again, as we did at the near start of the game. Uh, this time uh, with a brace that connects the uh, panes of Herculite glass behind the uh, Philadelphia net to our left. That's how we have a face-off. Let's pause for station identification on the Flyers Hockey Network. The television home of the Flyers, WTAF TV 29, Philadelphia. Back here at the Boston Garden, we're all set to go. It's going to be the Flyers moving from left to right. They're shorthanded for the next 21 seconds. Ross Lonsbury is still off for a hooking. It'll be Clark and Barber, the penalty killers. Jimmy Watson and Ed Van Epp on defense. The conventional Boston power play unit is on, and for second period action, let's go Flyers, and let's go Gene Hart. Thank you, Dono. Clark, Barber, Jimmy Watson, and Van Epp. Flyers move to our right, Bruins to our left. They have Al Sim out there. They're obviously not counting on the full power play. Sim fires it down behind Perron. Then it lines it off the Herculite. Ward tries to knock it down. Can't park racing for it at center. Poked away by Sim. Goes to Barber. Barber coming to the Boston line. Tied up by Hodge. And has the puck taken away by Cashman. Who circles behind the Boston net as Lonsbury comes out. And the team's at full strength. As we played a half a minute of the second period. one nothing Boston. Or up fast mark at center ice. At the red line. At the flyer line. Trying to drop a pass. He does, but Lonsbury read the play and tapped it back down ice, where Hodge has to retreat and gather it by the Boston net and shoot behind. Lonsbury drops off. Esposito turns up ice. It's given to Sims along the left wing board. Crosses to Esposito on the right wing at center. Crosses over the red line. Rolls it down behind Perron. Van Imp sets it up. Pokes it away from Cashman. Esposito holds it in the offensive right wing corner. Signed up by Clark and Lonsbury, and play is called. One nothing Flyers trail the Boston Bruins as we're in the opening minute of tonight's second period of play and uh, on a warm night it uh, would seem very logical that this game could drag out longer than normally and of course with the uh, maintenance delays and uh, the heavy penalty load that both clubs picked up in the first period as Gene pointed out we're uh, well beyond the normal limit of uh, for the amount of time that's been played in this game the face off will come up to the Left of Bernie Perrant in the flyer zone. Flyers go with McLeish, Lonsbury, and Nole against the Shepherd line for Boston. Music and Schwartz. Lonsbury ties up Schwartz, tries to reach the puck along the far board. Backhands it behind the net to DuPont. Challenged by Music. Winds up for Joe Watson, who doesn't see it. In comes Schwartz, the four check. They jam it up, and it rolls to Nole. Plays to center ice, too far for Lonsbury. Played by Vadney, right back to Nole at center. Coming to the Boston line. A shot right on. And Gilbert with a skate save. The rebound loose in front, cleared behind by Vadney. Dumps the pass off to Dallas Smith, who brings it quickly to center ice. At the red line, cuts to the far side, feeds a right wing pass to Schmoss. Down into the corner, centering shot off the side of the net. Caroms to DuPont, quickly up along the near boards to center. Gets past Busick, avoids the check, and dumps it to center ice. And Busick really would have taken a hunk of DuPont had he connected with that one. Pocket center, stolen by McLeish. Pass behind Lonsbury. Waits for it at the Boston line. Rink wide pass to Nole. Shot! Just tipped to the short side by Dallas Smith as Gilbert was reading a long side shot. Now Schmaltz with it in his own zone. Bad to Dallas Smith at center ice. Crosses Schmaltz on the right wing. Over the line. Tries to get inside Lonsbury. Plays a pass to Smith. Down behind the net. Centers behind the net. And then Busick took a rip with his elbow at Nole who was back checking. As Nole up along the near side. Fails to get it out as Shepard tries to keep it in. Loses it back to Nole, who flips the center. Now Vadney right up the middle, over the line to Busick. He's going right on in, and then loses the shot on the right circle. Gets the centering pass to Shepard. His shot smothered in ricochets to the near board, where Nole takes it on the fly. Up at center for McLeish. At the Boston line, dumps it in on Gilbert as out comes Zaleski along with Chris as the Flyers make a line change. Lonsbury still out there. Pass intended for Chris from the slot. Blocked to the far boards by Vadney and controlled by Schmoss. Schmoss drops back to Smith, right up at center ice. Smith pass Chris, backhands it into Savard, who's out there now. Down behind the net of the Philadelphia, the puck goes from Savard. Kinberchuk out now for Philadelphia. Savard forechecking, Kinberchuk cuts past him on the near side. Challenged by Orr, tries to play through to Zaleski. Blocked by Savard, then checked off his stick by Chris, down into the Boston zone. Andre Savard out along the near side. Avoids Zaleski, now is tied up by Chris. 
Overskates the puck, but picks it up at his own line. Tied up by Zaleski, kicks it forward to Van Ip, and he backhands at the center. Onto the stick of O'Reilly. At the Bruin Lorraine flyer line, over the line. Shot high over the net. Dug out by Savard. Centers off the rod pass. Centers again, right out in front. Mark got a shot. And short side saved by Perrant. And holding uh, Jimmy Watson in the corner of Savard. Clearing pass to Marcotte. Back to Sims. Right in front and looking for O'Reilly for a tip. Deflected by the Flyers into the far corner. Kendra Chuck with it. Tries to pass off the near boards and does to Van Inch. Will come to his own line. Off the near board. Down to Crest. Crest over the line with a drive. High short side save with a glove by Gilbert. And he hangs on to stop play. And with 16-13 remaining in the second period, it remains one to nothing Boston. Why do travelers in Canada carry the American Express card? The American Express card is a privilege uh, in that it's a little more difficult to get than, more, uh, than most of the other cards. The reason I carry the American Express card is that I think it's uh, the best overall card. I only have to carry one card. I feel almost naked if I don't have my American Express card in my pocket. With the American Express card, we don't need anything else. Call 800-528-8000 to apply for an American Express card. Back here at the Garden, the Bruins seem to have picked up the momentum that uh, they had going for them in the first period as they put on a great bit of pressure on Bernie Perrault and the Flyers on that last shift. All right, Esposito. The draw goes to Flett. Weak shot, smothered, report, reaches the net, and it's Schultz charges Dallas Smith, who had it at his skates, and it kicks into Gilbert, and now Dallas Smith. And Schultz go shoving at one another, and everyone else piles in. Cashman takes a push at Flett. Cashman and Flett now look like maybe they'll be the major participants. The sticks and the gloves are dropped. Clayton has a hold of Cashman, and everybody has got interlocking arms in that melee of 10 players to the left of Gilbert. Cashman appears as though he's willing to take on just about anyone as they're all bunched up around Matt Pavlich and John D'Amico. Schultz now has dropped his gloves and is skated away from the Bruins by linesman John D'Amico. Apparently no penalties. Ah, now they're going to be penalties. Cashman has been waved over. And Bill Flett. They'll be both going off for at least two minutes for their part in the scuffle. 3.52, and Flett picks up for him one of the few penalties that he's had in the playoffs. He now has 21 minutes and is first in this series. And the Flyers' 10th penalty of the game, and the Bruins' eighth. And has been so often the case in these last three games, penalties are doubled up. Minors or majors to one team or the other. Figured it'd be roughing. That is the call. Roughing against both Cashman and Flett. Both teams will play shorthanded for the next two minutes of play. Buck dropped right in front. Barber takes a rip, but it was beaten to it by the Bruins, and out they come. Esposito to Dallas Smith against DuPont. Flips one wide to Parad. Esposito tries to reach it, steered off by DuPont. Kicked up along the far boards. Vatney screens off Barber. Puck loose. Mark had it, then uh, Esposito and finally controlled by DuPont. Rolls went around the net to the near boards for Blade, and he'll carry it to the Philadelphia line. Got Barber on his left, Clark on his right. Over the line to Clark. Clark controls, tries to hit Barber. He was behind Smith, deflected though to the near board for Phil Esposito behind the Boston net. Out along the far side. Check. Dumps that puck up to Vadneo. Carries, tries to play back to Dallas Smith, but behind him and into the Bruin corner, where Esposito then tries to start it out to Smith along the near boards, crossing to Dallas to Vadney back on the right wing, preceded by Hodge, and Hodge goes in, but no offside is called as Esposito to Hodge, the pass behind him, finds the center behind the Philadelphia net, there's a stick loss, and it's DuPont without a stick. Back to the point to Vadney, crosses to Dallas Smith, he'll drive in with a shot, oh, it bounced up in front of Perrant, as he fanned uh, a little bit on his stick, and he was able to hold the rebound as Hodge went charging in him. And now Bladen and Esposito start shoving. Esposito pushed, and Bladen pushed right back, and very quickly the linesmen move in. And DuPont is a bit testy at this point, also, as uh, we've had more penalty box action than we have uh, good straight out hockey action in this game. Dallas Smith getting off a good shot. So with 15 minutes straight up left in the second period, the score remains Boston 1, Flyers nothing.
soccer is a simple game. A simple 90 minutes of hard-hitting, non-stop action. This team, the Philadelphia Atoms, is the number one soccer team in North America. Find out why at Veterans Stadium. Meet the Denver Dynamos this Saturday at the Vet. Kickoff, 8 o'clock. Back here at the Boston Garden, another brace of roughing minors to Phil Esposito of Boston, Tom Bladen of the Flyers, both teams two man short. And this is where our, our players like McLeish are particularly dangerous because there's so much open skating room. Far side pass to LaDuke. Shot wide at Perron as it was smothered by Jimmy Watson who takes LaDuke out of the play and allows Van Ipp to control easily behind the net. To Jimmy Watson back to Van Ipp. Bruins have Sim out there along with Orr. And Leduc now playing through to Clement was Van Imp, but Clement preceded the play offside and will have a faceoff just at the center ice red line along the near side of the ice. Puck will actually be dropped to the Boston side of the center ice red line as penalty time remaining. We've got 28 seconds left on the penalties to Cashman and Flett. A minute 36 left on the penalties to Esposito and Bladen. Bruins control the draw. I'll send up to Leduc. He tries to get past Van Imp. The puck does. He doesn't. Sim follows it up in the corner. Centering pass. Nice play, but LeDuc wasn't there, and out comes Clement. One-on-one -on -one against Orr. Slows down. Winds up at the blue line. Shot. Skate saved by Gilbert, and one that appeared to be going wide of the net. Now Orr behind. Comes out past Clement and leaps the rush at center against Watson and Van Imp. He's got LeDuc on his left. Winds up. Shot. Off for one club, although that's seen high and wide. Centering pass to Orr. Right out in front, and now we've got Cashman out along with Plett. Left behind Cashman. He'll go right on in. He goes to shoot. Save. Rebound in front. And it's kicked clear. They score. Bill Flett scores for a case of tasty cake. And it's tied at one. And Jill Gilbert is beside himself. I don't know what he's claiming. Flett was in the crease because he followed his own shot in, which is perfectly legal. And Clement came in to help out. And the goal count, this game is all tied up at one. And Bill Flett, after a long dry spell, Don picks up his first playoff goal. Flett took it in off the right wing. Gilbert made the save, but the puck was still in play. Flett went into the crease. And Clement came in and jammed it in. I think it's going to be Clement getting the goal. Yes, as we got a second look at it, the two were in there, and it appears Billy Clement. Yeah, Billy Clement, his first playoff goal. And that one will come from Flett. So we have a brand new hockey game, and Gilbert did uh, complain, but not as bitterly as perhaps uh, he might have. No lay with the puck. They're playing five aside. Tries to hit Chris, dealing it away as Shepard to Dallas Fifth, who reverses back into the defensive uh, left wing corner of the Bruins and plays around the net to Vadney. Vadney sets up as the Flyers have out there. No lay with Chris. DuPont with Joe Watson. Schmaltz, Vadney with Dallas Smith and Shepard. Vadney, a nice deep pass. Chris coming in on the left wing of the flyer line. Penetrates along the board. Good check by Nole. Joe Watson digs the puck out. Rolls it around to the far corner. Holds up as he thought he was being chased. Out challenged by Shepard. Comes out to the near side of the net. Back away from Shepard. Waits too long and allows Shepard to get a play. And now Schmaltz steals it away. It's kicked free. But the DuPont, DuPont reverses. And comes up on the left side to center ice, all by himself against Vadney. Dumps it into the near corner. Nole trying to go in with Dallas Smith. They bang one another. There's Shepard digging the puck out as Nole came out of the bump with the Dallas Smith swinging his stick, but on the ice. As out comes, the penalties are over now. Everybody at full strength. Schwartz from a bad angle. Fires wide as Nole gets the rebound along the near board, shoots the center. 12.45 remaining in the second period. The Flyers have tied it. Billy Clement jamming in a second shot after Flett missed the rebound. On his initial drive, Nolay at center, shoving through to Chris. Chris rolls it down into the Boston zone behind Gilbert. Out, gives the puck to Vadney. Vadney flips past Seleski to Busick, blocked by Chris. McLeish, and then as he gets a second try, as Busick fires over the red line at center ice to Schwartz. On the offside, 12:23 remaining in the second period. The game tied at one. Psst. Ice cream lovers, how do you recognize a good thing before you taste it? You look 
for the package it comes in. Abbott's ice cream. One of the good things to remember from Abbott's. Back here at the Boston Garden. Game five of the Stanley Cup Finals. It's Flyers one, Boston one. Face off in the Boston zone. Penalty box is cleared for one of the few times in the game. And they've got Savard out there with O'Reilly and Marcotte. The Flyers go with McLeish, Zaleski on his right, and the Lonsbury. Behind the net, Orr sets it up for Savard. Comes out quickly along the left wing. Gets past McLeish. And he corners it into the far corner of the flyer zone. But Jimmy Watson is there to beat O'Reilly and Savard to equip the center. Orr, as he spun around at center ice by McLeish or Zaleski, fires it into the fire, uh, flyer zone and catches both uh, Savard offside. Flyers travel arrangements by Admiral Travel. So whether you're moving a great hockey team or a family of four on vacation, you'll find the help you need at Admiral. Admiral Travel in the corner of 16th and Walnut in downtown Philadelphia. And they're open Wednesday evenings for your convenience. Clement wrapping in a rebound uh, on a play initially started by Bill Flett right after he came out of the penalty box. We have a brand new hockey game going. Buck rolls to Jimmy Watson up past Kindrachuk, but it'll roll to the side of Gilbert, so there'll be no icing. Or behind the net, out along the near side, plays off the boards to Marcotte, who takes it on the fly. Comes to the near boards, over center again, trying to get to the corner, but it rolls to Perron, steers it away from O'Reilly to Billy Barber, checked by Savard, tries to kick the puck free. Savard digs it under his skates. The two of them, along with Jimmy Watson, jam it up, and there'll be a face off to the left of Perron. 11.41 remaining in the second period, and we have a tied hockey game. Thus far, the Bruins have uh, maintained the edge uh, in uh, aggressiveness over the Flyers, and uh, even though the score is tied 1-1, obviously the quotes uh, of Beth Whittle and their coach, plus a, a hard-driving practice yesterday, must have uh, had a lot to do with turning this Bruins club around. They're playing a much better game of hockey than they did in the last couple of games. Savard, Mark Todd, and O'Reilly, Barber, and Celeski centered by Chris. Rolls right through the goal mouth, and Perron steers it away from Savard out to the far point. It's wound to Orr. No shot. Clips one down behind Perron again. Leaves it for Jimmy Watson right up the middle to Crisp. Crisp deeks his way past Marcotte. Comes to center. Checks and taken down by O'Reilly as the puck flips free to center onto the stick of Savard. Spun around by Crisp. Almost loses it to Zaleski. Rolls to the Philadelphia line. Tap back to Zaleski. Deeks his way and cuts to the far side. Over the Bruin line pass blocked nicely by O'Reilly they both over skate but now Savard with the puck to the near board has nowhere to go circles back at his line up on the right wing at the flyer line to Orr Orr over the line holding off Jimmy Watson rolls it down behind the flyer net Kendra Chuck in there gives it away to Orr looking to center now digs out in front of shot right through the goal mouth as Mark Hutt was there Sims crossing it through the goal mouth no one there to the far side where Kendra Chuck Tries to flip at the center ice and dies off the stick of Savard. Controlled by Sims to O'Reilly on the left wing over the line. He'll get a shot. Holes is dumped by Van Ipp. Sweeps it to the far board. And then Marcotte goes in and high sticks Perron in the net. As they joust one another and the Flyers back on the left wing. Kendrachuk holding, dumping it in on the net. And it hops over Schultz's stick. Gets his own carom. Bump tries to dig it out. Goes to the far side of the net. Centers. And Gilbert drops the stick and just does a swan dive to the rear area of the net to fall on the puck. Well, the Flyers are beginning to bounce back, and with 10.23 left in the second period, the score is tied at one. Across the high smoky mountain, across the deep valley green, your trail in the sun, yeah, your trail in the sun to a thirst, a thirst for more than a one. is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. Back here at the Boston Garden, Gene Hart, Don Earl, as uh, we review some of the action that has taken place in this uh, second period. Dave Schultz on a good setup, but the puck took a crazy bounce over his stick as he had open net along the near side. Gene, again, uh, one of those pains are Herculite this time in the corner down to our right seems to have broken loose from its moorings. Maybe a facetious remark, but the two teams are holding up under the pressure, but the building seems to be falling in. It's an old one. 
built, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, back in 1927. I would think this Chicago Stadium and the Olympia, the three last remaining relics, although I guess the Maple Leaf Garden and the Montreal, but they seem to have weathered the years with a little better condition. Well, they've both been refurbished over the years. This one has not, uh, structurally speaking. Cashman, Hodge, and Esposito out against Clark. Back. Clark gets it to late in the shot. Nice save on the screen by Gilbert. A flat in the corner. Centers. It rolls off the stick. Hodge tries to reach it first. Dumped in to Savard. But there was Schultz to clear it back into the Boston zone. Cashman loses it to Clark. He's got flat. But a great play by Bradney. Plays it up the center to Esposito. Left wing to Cashman. Down behind the net. Right through the goal mouth. And Hodge couldn't get his stick down as he was tied up beautifully by Dupont. Back comes Clark to the Boston line with Schultz. Holds over the line. Avoids Hodge's check. Dumps it down behind the net to Flett. Got Schultz in front. He and Vadney are really going at it as it's played out by Cashman to Hodge. Behind Esposito. Crosses over that red line and winds it down behind Perron. Perron shoves it away from Hodge up to Flett. Flett sends Schultz away on the fly on the left wing at center ice. Peaks to the near side. Over the Boston line. Comes into the near side. It's hit by Cashman. Loses the clock. He's got flat in front. Goes to shoot. It's still loose. And Pope Frey to Esposito. As down goes Schultz and Espo breaks out with Cashman. Out comes McLeish. Over the line. Sweep check away from Esposito. Perrant behind the net. Espo ch checks him. Puck out to the far side. Perrant now just getting into the net. In that corner, McLeish knocks down the pass with his glove and carries it to center himself with Schultz. At the line. Drops to Schultz. He's tired and loses it to Schmock. Back at the flyer line on the right wing. Drops to Esposito. Flips one. And gives it really away to Philadelphia and Perron. Perron gives to Dupont. His pass is blocked. Gets his own carom. Dumps it into the Bruins zone. Nolé behind the net. Tries to center. Blocked by Vadney. And they jam it up and will get a face off to the left of Gilbert. Once again, the Flyers will not be arriving at the main terminal at Philadelphia International Airport tonight following this Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Finals. The Flyers will be arriving at a service area on Island Avenue that's south of the airport circle. And arrival time there will be approximately 1.10 a.m. And we say approximately because at this juncture it's rather difficult to ascertain how long this one's going to go. Sims is out defensively with Orr. Shepard, Smots, and Busick. Flyers go McLeish, Lonsbury with Nolay. Busick stopped at center ice. Sims follows the puck up at the flyer line. Slides in off the stick. Jimmy Watson controls. Deeks up nicely at center. Right up the middle. Nolay and nice play by Shepard as he was a half a stride behind Shepard. But Shepard reached out as he was back checking. They intercept that pass. Jimmy Watson behind the flyer net in the corner. Gets a pass to Lonsbury. Lonsbury broken up by Orr. But they play up to McLeish. Coming with Nolay. Winds up with a drive. And it was tipped by Sh Al Sims up and over the net. Busick along the near side. Orr now with Smart. Two on one over the line. He's got uh, Shepard right on in. He shoots. Great save for Ron Orr with a rebound. With a score. Bobby Orr. And they get two to one. Well, Orr was not to be denied on that play as the Bruins forged a three on two break. And it paid off for them as the Flyers were caught a bit out of position defensively. Orr with a great setup. Shepard, a great save by Perrant, but the Flyers' defense could not cover Orr, and he beat Perrant to the glove side, and it's 2 1 Boston. Well, it's Orr's third goal of the playoffs. Certainly not high water mark for him, but it was a big goal, and again, he and Shepard teamed to get the Bruins on the board. In the first period, they broke, and it was Orr going in along. Perrant made the save, and Shepard the rebound this time. Shepard was beaten by Perrant, who couldn't handle the rebound. And with 7.54 left in the second period, the game is tied uh, two to one Boston. Tasty Cake brings you a few basic penalties of hockey. Minor like elbowing, major like fighting, and the penalty shot, awarded when a player is pulled down from behind while shooting. But penalties aren't the same for these little flyers. Two minutes in the box is time enough to enjoy a delicious tasty break with Tasty Cake. Great tasting, because it's made with great tasting things, like milk, butter, and eggs. Tasty cake. All the good things wrapped up in one. Jane, uh, McLeish's 12 goals puts him just three behind the Stanley Cup record held by Yvonne Cornway at 15. We're going to have a delay as, again, the unthinking fans through debris 
And I think a bottle is broken on the ice. At least that's what it appears from here. And again, uh, Shepard was beaten and Orwin on the backhead and found an open net. As Jimmy Watson dove across to try to block it, but both times the Bruins have been Johnny on the spot as Perrant was equal on a great breakaway save, but couldn't handle the second shot. And it comes at 12.06, Orr's third, Shepard and Busick the assist. So the Flyers tied it here, and the Bruins uh, got the lead again at 2-1. to one. And there does appear to be a bottle out there. And I think immediately after the bottle was thrown, and everyone looked up to the upper deck of the first tier here, and quickly there were a bevy of security people around there. Frank Torpy, the director of NHL security, is sitting across the way, four or five rows behind the Boston bench, and uh, he is looking up. You know, there again is a situation where those that see an act like that being uh, committed should point them out to the ushers or to uh, police if they're nearby because nothing is accomplished by it and uh, it's a very dangerous situation for players in either club. Now there seems to be a, a, a bruja to our right as everyone is standing up and facing away from the rink. Temper is flaring. Give you a quick wrap up so far of what things have happened. Shepard from Orr in the first period is 11th of the playoffs a shorthanded goal at 814 Bruins outshot the Flyers 17 8 the penalties were nine Philadelphia seven Boston second Jane, uh, correct me if I'm wrong the uh, goal by Orr here at 1206 uh, which is the go ahead goal at the moment for Boston is the first goal in this series they scored uh, other than uh, the third period goal by uh, Orr I believe uh, in other than first period play right. uh, they have eight goals and out to really have full win late in the game and at least in this playoffs with the hot buildings while the Flyers have been going four lines most of the way seem to have that big leg. All right, we've got 754. We're ready for the faceoff. The break cleaned off Kimberchuk, Barbara, and Selesky. DuPont with Joe Watson. And LaDuke is out there with Marcotte and Forbes. Nice move by Joe Watson. Gets himself past LaDuke at center. Fires eye high in on Gilbert. Tears it off the glass, the near side, away from Zaleski, but right into the corner where Zaleski is carried by Forbes. Kimberchuk in there with Leduc and Dallas Smith. And then we've got Leduc trying to get going with Kendrachuk. And they're quickly separated, and nothing has happened so far, really. Gene, uh, there will be a lot of people, I'm sure, that will cry sour grapes, but it appears to me in this game tonight, the Bruins want to fight. They have precipitated just about every one of them. And I would imagine that this is their strategy to try and take the Flyers off their game. So at 7.37 left in second period action, it's Boston 2, Flyers 1. It takes some searching to make a tomorrow. It takes some doing to make a dream come true. It takes M.A.B. to help the two of you do something beautiful. Brighten your world with colorful MAB Rich Lux paints. Available at MAB paint stores, dealers, and Rich Lux home centers. Brighten your world for tomorrow. Declare and then dumps it in behind the Bruin net. Badney up on the far wing. Marcotte shoves the center nicely for Leduc. Going against Joe Watson. Failed by Kinderchuk. Shot wide of the long side. Rolls up along the ledge on the near side. Dallas Smith pokes it down. Dug away from him by Zaleski. And Dallas Smith throws a punch at Barber. Over the line comes Kendrachuk. Back to Zaleski and shot. And Gilbert with a great save and a good give and go. Kendrachuk to Zaleski that almost clicked for the tying goal. Now Kendrachuk along the near boards. Wrapped up by Dallas Smith. In comes Leduc high. And play is called as Barber is the fourth member of that even quartet. As play is stopped with 6.54 remaining. In the second period, the Bruins on top by a goal, two to one. Gilbert just got a piece of that shot by Seleski. As Seleski cut in beautifully off the right wing, just enough of a, a piece of it to deflect the puck up and over the net as it missed the far post. And the Bruins appear tonight to be returning to their former image of the big bad Bruins as they are precipitating a lot of the body work in the corners tonight. Clark, Flett, Schultz against Esposito, Cashman, and Hodge. Clark off the near boards. 
Schultz has it, but he's double teamed immediately by Sims. Digs it out again to Van Ipp. Weak shot on the net. Gilbert makes the save. Dumps it in the corner for Orr. Taken right into the corner boards by Flett. And they jam it up and we'll have a face off again. This time to the right of Gilbert in the Boston zone. So again, good pressure by the Flyers. Keeps the Bruins penned up and forces the face off in the Boston zone, which will uh, give the Flyers a second chance to regroup and line up for the shot on goal. This time it's Sims shoving it back to Orr, tied up by Clark, reverses, voids Flett's check, looks up the slot and feeds Esposito. Comes with Hodge on the right wing, back to Espo, right up the middle. Goes to the far boards, drops a pass intended for Hodge, deflected. Van Em steers it, but Hodge, Cashman is in there to take it. Got Espo in front. Espo going at it with Jimmy Watson. They're really jamming at one another, and I think they're both going off, but now they high stick again, but Espo is not a combatant. No, as a matter of fact, uh, in my four years here in Boston, Gene, he said the only fight he ever won was against his former coach, Harry Sinden, who's now the managing director. Now Cashman apparently wants to get at Schultz as they were having words. Now Hodge gets himself in Schultz's way and is pushed off, and Hodge takes Schultz's stick and throws it away, but Hodge has yet to drop glove or stick. And now Schultz is being warned, and here is where Dave can't lose his cool, because by precipitating some trouble, he can get himself a misconduct. And now Schultz waves his glove at Cashman. I think that'll be it. And Newell is coming over and saying, that's it. That's enough. He's just quiet. And that's what Dave should do right now. Matt Pavlich trying to cool him down. The linesman will try and uh, solve the uh, wounded pride of a player and uh, keep him out of the penalty box. With 6.20 left in the second period, the score is still 2-1 Boston. uncertain times you worry about where to put your hard-earned money so Girard Bank now offers a variety of savings plans some have guaranteed yields all are fast growing federal regulations impose a penalty for funds withdrawn prior to maturity but if you don't there are bumper crops of interest plant your money in a Girard savings plan and start reaping the harvest to the left of Bertie Perrant 6.20 left in second period play. Esposito, a uh, correction, Barber and Dallas Smith go off for two minutes apiece. Correction, that's Esposito and Jimmy Watson for their fracas in front of Bernie Perron. Well, 22 penalties now called by Dave Newell and uh, 12 of those against Philadelphia. But it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh pairing. So 14 of those penalties have resulted in a matching of minutes to each side. We're getting the calls. High stick is a call. Shepard out with Schmatz, Orr and Sim. Clark with Flint, Van Imp and Jimmy Watson. Shepard tries to get a shot on the net. Is tripped up. And Bruin fan looking for a trip on Clark who seemed to pull him down from behind. Play up at center. Flett going against Orr. Shot! And Gilbert got it in his skate as it seemed to fool him a bit. Or carrying that puck up quickly to center to Shepard. Shepard over the line. A shot. That one deflected by Van Imp over the top of the net. Joe Watson behind. Quickly out the near side. Is hacked at by Shepard. Drops a pass for Flett. Flett loses it. Gets the puck back at his own line and starts up ice. Is tripped up. And no penalty is called on that one. As Dave Newell lets hit for Tatko. Sims over the line, into the corner, right out in front, stolen away by Joe Watson. He spun around by Shepard, and now we're going to have a penalty. And I don't know against who, it's against the Joe Watson for holding. Well, Dave Newell continues to call him close at some junctures and lets others go at other junctures, and Joe Watson doesn't understand this call, but it's a holding call against Joe as he joins his brother Jimmy in the box. Jimmy Watson and Esposito still have a minute 15 left on their penalty. And for the Flyers, that's the fourth minor call in this period to run their game total to 13. Time of the penalty, 14-25. With 1.15 remaining on the penalties to Jimmy Watson and Esposito, and Watson having the full two, the Bruins will go 75 seconds with a four skate is the three edge, and they have Leduc, Schmatz, Shepard at the left point with Orr, and the Flyers go DuPont with uh, 
Van Imp and the Clark as they have two of their five defensemen sitting out penalties. Rich LeDuc, Bobby Smots, the forwards with Shepard and Orr, Bobby Clark, and Rich LeDuc to the left of the right of Perron. Dug out by Smots from Clark, top of the near circle. Still holding, crosses to LeDuc. LeDuc back to Orr. Smots in front. Orr wants to give to Shepard. Or bounces over a stick. The carom in the corner. He digs it out. Holds along the near boards. He's going to pass to Orr. He'll go right on in. Shot. Weak. Tipped down by Van Imp. Cleared out along the near side. And Clark is on side and will take it going against Orr. Holds along the near side. Plays back. Trying to hit Orr away. But Orr steals the puck to the Philadelphia line. Now LeDuc breaking for the net. Orr to Shepard. Shot. Wide to the high and long side. Right along the edge. And lays right up there. And we've got a violation as that puck sat right there. Dave Newell whistled it down. And the faceoff will come into the neutral zone. And John D'Amico is saying why. The boards here at the Boston Garden do leave much to be desired, Gene. There's all sorts of uh, inadequacies. They're not uh, even. They take uh, The puck takes crazy bounces off the boards. And uh, the way the glass is, or the Herculite, if you will, is, uh, is held in place, this puck does take some crazy bounces and will slide quite frequently along the top of that dasher. So far, Shepard and Orr have been a, a winning team, a winning pairsome for the Bruins tonight as they've set each other up for the two Bruin goals and have uh, really come on for most of the offensive gestures by Boston. They've got 37 seconds remaining on the penalties to Esposito and the Flyers, Jimmy Watson. 122 on the Flyers, Jimmy Watson. Boston with a four skaters to three edge for the next 37. And then following that, they'll have the uh, five skaters to four edge, 445. Puck hops over that day stick from Shepard to center ice. Vadney challenged by McLeish, gives to Orr. The cheats in the Boston zone back to Vadney, and he'll start right up the middle. Gets the two flyer defensemen. Drop pass Busick. There's a shot wide of the long side. Spins all the way out to the far point to Orr. Orr closing in. He's got Vadney right in the slot. Top of the circle. He'll wind up. Gives instead to Busick. Can't control the puck. Dug out by DuPont and shot down the ice. We have Esposito and Jimmy Watson scheduled out in five seconds as Orr comes to the near side. Starts up slowly at his own line. He's got Vadney with him and Busick. Now Esposito and Watson are out. Orr holds the puck. Check. Spun around. Doesn't get it out. Still doesn't get it out. Finally, it goes to Vadney. Gives the puck away to Jimmy Watt, to McLeish. And McLeish just clears it down the boards on the near side. Orr going for it. Jimmy Watson challenging him. Orr pokes it up on the far boards. Gets past Crisp and handles it his own line. Drops a nice pass. A reverse pass to Shepard at the Philadelphia line. Feeds Esposito. Esposito winding it around. Hits the chink in the boards again. Tipped by Blade. Looking for Jimmy Watson. Challenged by Vadney. Spins around and clears, but at the point, kept in. Esposito, shot block, rebound right in front, Vadney. Save for Rod. And play is called. And again, tempers flare as DuPont checked Vadney away from Perron. But nothing uh, more than that happens as the two of them skate back to their positions. Joe Watson will be back on the ice in three seconds. With a faceoff in the flyer zone, it's going to be dropped in the circle to the right of Perron once more. We're down to 338 left in second period play. Shepard a good move as he kept that clearing pass in the zone with his skate. Vadney again uh, robbed by Perron as Perron has robbed several Bruins in this game thus far. Not the least of which was John Busick. We've got Gilbert tapping his stick down to our right. Usually that means that there is uh, some debris on the ice or maybe to remind the players that Joe Watson will be out in three seconds. That's just what he did Don as he tapped the last time he held up the three fingers on his catching hand which has a golf glove on it to further protect against the sting of those pucks that come ripping in there. Esposito, Music and Hodge with Orr and Dallas Smith. Flyers have out there Barber and Clark with Van Imp and Jimmy Watson to the right of Perron in the flyer zone. Flyer controlled the draw, but it's stolen away by Hodge to Busick. He fails to get it back to the point now. Joe Watson is out into Busick from uh, the Flyers and up at center ice. The pass jumps off Barber's stick as he went two on one with Joe Watson against Orr, but couldn't control, and Orr has it up on the far side. Caroms a pass to Hodge, up the slot to Dallas Smith at center ice. 
Cuts to the near wing at the flyer line. Penetrates into the corner. Dumped by Van Ip. Puck circled away by Clark. Out to the point. Oh, right on in. Score! And again, it's Bobby Orr who dents the armor of the Flyers as the Bruins now take the two-goal lead. It's 3-1. to one. For Orr, his second goal of the night is fourth on the series as the Flyers actually coughed up the puck in their own zone following a good check by Van Epp. Dallas Smith feared to have it at his feet, but then Hodge dug it out to Orr, went right up the middle at close range, and fired through Jimmy Watson, and it appeared to screen uh, Perron, and it went, kicked off his skate and into the net. And the Bruins lead 3-1. to one. It will be Hodge getting the assist at 16.55, and the Bruins lead 3-1. to one. Down it goes behind Perron. As the Flyers fight it, the Bruins have scored two to go ahead. Right in front to Cashman. Backhander skittles wide as Esposito is in front, tied up by Van Im. Dug out by Jimmy Watson. Right up the middle, it goes to Kinderchuk, who comes with Barber. At the Boston line, over the line to Barber. Shot on the net, jumps over on the deflection to Cashman. Tied up by Kinderchuk, plays up along the far board. Still tied up, kicked out to Barber. Barber can't handle it, and out to Cashman from Hodge. Right up the middle, tail by Dallas Smith. Dumps it into the near corner. Smith looks to center. Off a skate. Wound along the near boards by Hodge. Back to the point. Knocked down by Esposito. Back to Cashman. Rolls around the net. Cashman can't center as he's tied up by Jimmy Watson. In comes Schultz. A good bump at Cashman. Watch out. Watch out. There they might go. And they are. Cashman is a southpaw, so Schultz better tie up that left hand. Schultz getting in some good right hands. Now is pinned to the back of the flyer net. Schultz continues to flail away with the right hand. Schultz is being pinned to the back of the net. And now Barber moves in at the front of the net as finally the linesmen are able to part the two of them as John D'Amico takes a hold of Cashman, Pavlich a hold of Schultz. Should be five minutes apiece for fighting. Looked like Cashman met a match there. And now Schultz is going for the penalty box. And with 2-12 remaining in the second period, it's 3-1 Boston. Freedom. Financial freedom. Freedom to live the way you want. Freedom to educate your children the way you want. Freedom to retire the way you want. Financial freedom, it doesn't come easy. But you don't have to go it alone. Merrill Lynch wants to help you fight for it. Merrill Lynch wants to help you fight for your financial freedom. Cashman finally redons his jersey as he's escorted to his penalty box. Schultz continues drawing with Cashman and will just uh, better watch out as Cashman wants to get at him. Dave Newell has warned him, and I think he might have thrown 10 already at Schultz. And Dave uh, is risking now losing himself out of the game, Don, and uh, he ought to get in that penalty box and sit down and maybe draw from there. Schultz uh, was actually waiting in front of the flyer penalty box. Now is being led off the ice. Maybe they figure with only two minutes left. Here's the announcement. So that's a call. Five each for fighting. Time of the penalties comes at 17.48. And a fan reaching over, apparently Gene was not aware of the fact that Frank Torpy, the director of the NHL security, was sitting right in front of him. Don, as we can see, down into the chute, down into the area behind, uh, uh, into the uh, aisleway, and that... Uh, hallway that goes to the flyer dressing and we thought we saw somebody take a poke at Dave and 
Dave in turn try to wrestle away from security men to get at him and then quickly a half a dozen more are rushed down into that area. There is a long hallway and the flyer dressing room is no more than 10 feet to the left after you go down through the exit way about three steps into the hallway. Penalties now are 14 to Philadelphia, 11 to Boston. That's two, four, six, eight majors called. And the Bruins, though, more importantly, lead three to one as Ken Hodge, as he skated to his bench, uh, made the significant point with a stick to the scoreboard as if to say to the Flyers, where it counts, we win. Three one so far. All right, coincidental majors, so the teams will not skate shorthanded. The Flyers have Kendrachuk out there with Cowick and Selesky, Bladen with DuPont, and it's Savard with Mark Cott and O'Reilly, Sims, and Orr. And Orr has been a giant with two goals and an assist. Selesky up along the near side, fails to get it out, tries again, does Bladen, it rolls to Kendrachuk, up by too far for Cowick, flipped it away from him by Orr to O'Reilly. His pass intended for Savard, picked off by Cowick, cuts to the near board. Tries to lift it in. Down goes Sims as Marcotte takes the puck away. Lifts it into the flyer far corner. Savard in there with DuPont. They collide. The puck is kicked free to O'Reilly. O'Reilly looking to center. Nobody in front except Blade. And the puck kicked back to the point to Orr. With a shot. Loose in front. It's still loose. A shot by O'Reilly with Perrant down. Sims with a drive. It's still kicked away nicely by Celeski and out to Cowick. Cowick lifting it to Orr. Who knocks it down with his glove and controls on the far boards. Pokes it to the flyer line. DuPont has it there, loses it, and the Bruins have a three-on-one, O'Reilly with Marcotte, Savard in front, shot, oh, and Savard had an open net, and missed, Savard had an open net, as he was sent in beautifully by Savard, Flyers ice it, or touches, and play is called, with 1-10 remaining in the second period, and the Bruins leading by two, three to one. Game six of the Stanley Cup final between the Flyers and the Bruins will be back at the Spectrum on Sunday afternoon, starting at two o'clock. As the Flyers lead in a uh, trail in this one, three to one, as Bobby Orr and Greg Shepard have combined to pick up a pair of goals by Orr plus one assist. Shepard a goal and an assist. And uh, they pretty much, as Gene has pointed out, have been a two man team. Shepard, Busick, and Schmatz. Puck drop, controlled by Busick. Along the near side, the Flyers have a two on one. Badney back. Lonsbury over the line, and they fumble the puck and get an offside. Dallas Smith gambled and got burned as Lonsbury broke two on one with McLeish against Dallas Smith. But Lonsbury, as he cut to the line, fumbled it just enough to send McLeish in on his right too soon. 104 remaining in the period. Shepard with McLeish. It rolls into the Bruins zone. Vadney has it there. Holes. Flips it past McLeish to Shepard. Shepard looking for Dallas Smith trailing the play over the line. Trying to get inside DuPont. Fighting for the puck. DuPont screens him off. McLeish comes to take it away. Skates past Shepard. Puck lifted. We're going to have a flyer penalty. And it looks like it's going to be a hook against DuPont. And it will come at 19-16. And so DuPont has picked up for him his one, two, three, fourth penalty of the night. As he took down Dallas Smith. And so the Bruins, who lead by two, will have an opportunity in the final three quarters of a minute in this period to go for the power play. DuPont finally has led to the flyer penalty box by referee Dave Newell with John D'Amico following him to make sure he does go in. For the Flyers, that's their seventh penalty called in this period. They had nine called in the first period for a total of 16. The only majors in this period being served by Cashman and Schultz five minutes for fighting. Flyers are going to have to Oh, it's butt ending. And with butt ending goes a fine, as uh, is the case with sparing. Butt ending is taking the butt end of the stick and driving it into an opposing player. Well, he must like Schwartz's effort tonight. He's got him on the right point, or right wing with Busick centered by Esposito. Shepard at the left point with Orr, and the Flyers go Jimmy Watson with Van M. Clement and Chris to the right of Ferrant. 3-1 Boston. Power play on for the Bruins. 44 seconds remaining in the second period. Puck is dropped. Back to Esposito with a shot. 
Wide of the short side. Clement racing for it with Orr. Orr sweeps it down into the corner. Kicked away from Schmutz by Jimmy Watson and sent out to center ice by Clement. 30 seconds left. Bruins uh, power play is cut in half by this time remaining in the period. Now to Orr going against Jimmy Watson over the line. Looks for Busick breaking for the net. Tied up by Jimmy Watson. In comes Clement and that's where they'll get the face off. 19 seconds remaining in the period. At the top of the circle in Philadelphia zone to the left of Perron. Minute 35 left on DuPont's penalty and penalties no question have uh, hurt the Flyers tonight as they really haven't been at full strength that much of the game. They trail at 3-1 a pair of goals by Bobby Orr and a single goal by Greg Shepard when the, fly, the Bruins were shorthanded. Back to Shepard to Orr. Forehand drive blocked by Clement to Shepard. 14 seconds remaining in the period. A shove in pass and tenor for Esposito cleared to the corner. Jimmy Watson is there. Plays it up. Clement can't control. Six seconds left. Overskating it right in front is Shepard, and Joe, Jimmy Watson has it. He'll not get it out in time as the period ends. And the siren sounds with the score at the end of two periods. The Boston Bruins three, and the Philadelphia Flyers one. The time remaining on DuPont's call near the end of the period for butt ending Dallas Smith. For the third period, 3 1 Bruins. Let's go Flyers and let's go Don Earl. Thank you, Gene. And uh, with a flyer shorthanded for the next minute 16, they'll just play uh, keep away. It's going to be Clark and Barber, Jimmy Watson, and Ed Van Epp. Boston goes with Esposito, Busick Hyde, with Bobby Orr along with Greg Shepard at the point. Face off back into the flyer zone, cleared off the right wing boys the length of the ice by Ed Van Epp. Shepard will start the rush from behind his own net. He drops it off for Esposito coming up the right side cuts to the middle as he hits center ice looking for Hodge across the flyer line drops it off for Shepard along the left wing boards winds it around to the right point for Bobby Orr or back into the right wing corner goes behind the net Busick bouncing puck Hodge in front of backhand a blocked off Orr lets it go back to Shepard 42 seconds left on the penalty to DuPont Hodge back to Shepard the big drive Orr. Ken Hodge who tipped it by Perron and it's 4 1 Boston. Well, that's a power play goal at 39 seconds and it's Ken Hodge, first goal against the Flyers, and for him in the playoff series, it's number six and the Bruins' third power play. And it was set up by Shepard, a nice pass into the corner. Busick back to Shepard. He fired and Hodge directed it with his stick right through Perron, and who had never had a chance for the score. 39 seconds, and the Bruins have for the first time in the series. A three goal lead and it's four to one and the Flyers have a long uphill battle right now that they do. It's not impossible maybe improbable at this stage but the Flyers have done it before. However this is Stanley Cup play. Joe Watson up the left wing for Lansbury. Shepard and Busick pick up assists as Joe Watson is boxed in gets the puck up to Lansbury on the left wing. Check hard by Bobby Spots. Spots holding on free, but play continues as bad. And he crosses to Dallas Smith. Smith dumps it back into the Flyers' corner. This time to the far side. Watson gets away from Shepard. Shepard is hooking him, but Watson finally gets loose. Broken up by Shepard. Shepard wants to shoot. Still holds. Back to Vadney at the right point. His shot kicked out. Right away by Bladen for Simone Ole. He drops it off for Bladen. But Busick breaks up the play. Now it's Shepard back to Dallas Smith. Smith shot hits the flyer backboard. Joe Watson checks Schmatz, but Busick has it out of the corner. Gets by Shepard back to center right. Vadney feeds up to Shepard. It gets by him, and it will not be icing as someone made contact with it. Bladen starts out of his own zone. Left wing lead pass gets by Lonsbury, controlled by Vadney. Crosses to Dallas Smith. Smith shakes Lonsbury. Feeds up to Marcotte on the left wing. Marcotte ahead for Savard. Savard trying to go wide on Van Epp. Has to pull up short as he's off the shooting range. Right across in front of Perrant. O'Reilly overskates it. And here comes Seleski. Seleski right wing. Left wing pass McLeish. McLeish has shot his glove. Propped up in front but skated off by Marcotte. Jill Bear almost misplayed that. Now it's Marcotte. The drive. Hits the flyer backboard. Kindred chucked the rebound. He's broken up. O'Reilly's got it. To Savard behind the flyer net. 
and Jimmy Watson finally ties up play in the fire zone against their own backboard. A power play goal, the third for the Bruins in this uh, playoff round, and all told for them, uh, it gives them their 12th, was the most pivotal goal of the night because at 3-1, to one, any flyer goal here early in the third period makes it a very competitive game. But that really gives the uh, Bruins a, a stranglehold as they've got a free goal edge, and the Flyers know they've got to get four to win this one. Don Seleski out the right wing, now a left wing pass to Bruce Cowick against Orr, gets his shot away, gloved by Gilbert. Feeds off for O'Reilly. O'Reilly checked by Kindrichuk, kept in by Jimmy Watson. Kindrichuk along the left wing, tries to Cowick, rolls one in on Gilbert, kicked out. Cowick goes to the boards with Schmutz. Orr goes in there, and it's finally tied up by Orr for a faceoff, this time in the Boston end. We play 16.57 remaining in the third period, and it's 4-1 to one Boston. Oh, hello there, Fred. Hi, Harry. Doing some entertaining this weekend, huh, Fred? Yeah. I expect you'll be having lots of folks stopping by, unexpected-like. You're right. Yeah, you just can't tell who'll be dropping in. Don't get caught short. Buy Schaefer by the case, just in case. Hey, Emma and I thought we'd stop over tonight. We were going to bring along some Schaefer, but I guess you'll have enough. Schaefer, when you're having more than one. Back here at Boston Garden, 16.57 remaining in the third period. The Bruins with their biggest lead so far in the five games played to date, four to one. And by far their best offensive effort as Pep Quidlin has got his Bruins charges sky high for this one as the Flyers led in the series coming into tonight's game three games to one and one more loss and the bees are out of it a drive by Jimmy Watson kicked out by Gilbert. Here's Cashman up on the left wing. Across the Flyers blue line fires to the Flyers right wing corner for out of his net. Steers it ahead as Cashman rams into Dave Schultz and it's tied up in the Flyer right wing corner as Clark and Hodge waltz around. Don't forget those of you viewing us in Philadelphia, the Wings, Philadelphia's newest pro sport franchise, meet the Maryland Arrows in the TV premiere of Fox Lacrosse, immediately flyer following this Flyers telecast. And the Flyers again will not be arriving at the main terminal in the Philadelphia International Airport, but at the United Airlines Charter which is near the International Terminal on Island Avenue, south of the airport circle, and they'll come in approximately between 1 and 1.30, and that one will be brought to you live on WCAU in case you can't make it. On the faceoff, the Bruins control as Cashman rolls one from a deep angle. Flett tries to lead Clark, blocked off by Hodge, and his Van Epp ahead for Schultz. Schultz kicks it ahead across the red line, and he pulled up short. I think he thought he heard a whistle. Now it's Orr behind his own net. Cut up short, cut off short by Bill Flett, and Orr coming out of his own zone is upended by a Flett check. Cashman double team gets it to center ice. He loses, and Clark has it. Clark trying to pull it around Esposito. Now it's Cashman back for the Bruins. Cashman's going to have to do it alone as no one's with him. Hodge finally penetrates the zone. Cashman bumped by Jimmy Watson. Hodge digs it loose. Is Orr closing? Tipped by Van Epp as Esposito was wide open on the near side. Cashman out to Esposito. Kick save. Esposito, another great save as Clark was behind Perrant in the fly net. Here comes Schultz with Flett. Schultz broken up at the Boston line as Orr goes, uh, correction, Cashman goes heavy into the boards. Orr dumps Schultz and the puck is tied up against the boards. Now Hodge has got a hold of Schultz. And Schultz is wanting to know what that's all about. Dave, Dave Newell says, get out of there. Now Schultz is charging, and Dave is going to pick up 10 here sooner or later if he keeps charging around the ice going at people. And uh, I think we have some penalties called as Dave Newell is going to the box. Wayne Cashman, uh, Don, w went into the boards so heavily it was a kind of hurt that uh, could really cause an injury. 15.30 left in the third period, 4-1 to one Boston. You pay less money, you get less beef. But doesn't his regular food have meat? Sweetie, most dog foods don't have half the beef that Alpo Beef Chunks Dinner has. Look, his regular food or Alpo. 
Alpo has lots of nourishing meat byproducts, real beef, plus soy vitamins and minerals. Hey, picked Alpo. Convinced Alpo's got the meat dogs love. Mom, I should have known. You always get what you pay for. Oh. Doesn't your dog deserve Alpo? Wayne Cashman, not much of a penalty man in this series, has just picked up his third of the night. Comes for Spearing at 4.30, and the buyers who trail by three have got to get some on the board here, and this power play would be the right opportunity. Four to one, Boston, face off to the right of Gilbert. Clark gets it back to Barber at the left point. Barber holds. Deep in the left wing for McLeish, and we've got another penalty, maybe double minors. Clark and Vadney were going at it. Could be high sticking for both. Yeah, Clark and Vadney are going off. And so the penalties now stand 16 to the Flyers, 13 to the Bruins, but it'll be four skaters to three now for the Flyers. A uh, little more edge on the power play, and it's going to be a high stick. I guess on both. So with 15-23 remaining in the third period, the score Boston four and Philadelphia one. The season opens Saturday, May 25th at Delaware Park. Post time, 1.30. Clark and Vadney really going at it in front of the uh, Boston net, and so they were waved off by Dave Newell. We now have uh, 29 penalties called in the game, still nine shy of the National Hockey League record for penalties in a playoff game, which stands at 38. Both are going off, I'm sure, by Dave Newell for high stick. That's it. Four skaters to three, Don. On the face out, the puck cleared all the way out of the Boston end. Picked up by Tom Bladen at the flyer end. Four checking is Greg Shepard. Bladen right in front of Perron, dangerously close. Barber returns it to Bladen behind the net. Now it's off the left wing boards for McLeish. As the Flyers appear a bit disorganized on this advantage. Now it's Bladen out of his own end, feeding ahead on the right for McLeish, too far ahead. Blocked off by McLeish, kept in by Barber, and on the delay offside, finally called as Barber touched up. Fatigue has been a factor, you know, in all these games. The one team, mostly the Bruins, have seemed to fade it late in the game. But I get the impression, Don, that the Flyers are tired uh, more so than the Bruins are right now. And uh, that four to one score might have their uh, danders down just a bit. Okay, off the faceoff. Flyers controllers, Ross Lonsbury, whirls at center ice. Now across the Boston line. Intended for McLeish, but cleared out by Orr. And now he's got a breakaway by Greg Shepard. And Bladen back to tie him up. And we've got an offside call against Greg Shepard, an offside pass against Boston. So actually, in a sense, it was dramatic, but all of uh, Bladen's huffing and puffing and uh, was to uh, no avail because he could have let Shepard go by himself, and as soon as he touched it, the offside would have been called. 111 remaining on Cashman's penalty, 118 on that to Clark and Vadney. Flyers, four skaters to three. Face off in the Boston end. Lonsbury tried to drop it back to Barber, but... His stick was held and then released, and it zipped all, way, all the way back to the Flyers' backboard. Now it's Bill Barber up to center ice. Chooses the right lane, blocked out there, and again an offside force. And Dave Newell is uh, derisively cheered as he slips and falls. Well, we thought we had a lot of penalties called uh, in previous games, but this is the high watermark again, 29. We had 21 call in the first period Tuesday and 28 all called. So this is tops in the series, and Don will try to add up the penalties. Uh, got a total of 30, uh, Gene, thus far, and uh, penalty minutes up to 90. On the faceoff, Flett into the Boston zone on the left, looking for someone to pass to. Across for Dupont. Dupont fakes the shot but gives it away to Esposito. Or takes the lead pass. Across the flyer line. Or shot blocked off by Jimmy Watson. And now we've got Flett with Kendra Chuck, a two on one. Flett drive is deflected wide by Dallas Smith. Flett trying to control the puck, but has to come back to center ice. That day, and Clark will be out in 26 seconds. Cashman in 17. Here's Esposito. Across the flyer line. He's in no hurry. Drops it all the way back to Orr in the Boston zone. Cashman in five seconds will be out. Puck comes to Joe Watson at center ice, gets across the red line. 
Flyers trying to penetrate an offside on the right wing with Bill Clement. Faceoff will be outside the Boston line. In 110 penalties called so far, Don, and we just figured it out for the end of five games. That means there have been an average of 22 penalties called for a game. Five seconds remaining on the play to Vadney and the penalty to Clark. 13-28 in the uh, third period, and I'd have to say at this juncture, the 4-1 to lead looks secure. The Flyers have been held well in check all night by the Bruins, who have carried the play, checked well, and gotten the opportunities. A shorthanded goal, a power play goal, and forced the play and have earned the lead 4-1. to one. Terry Crisp gets the draw to Bill Clement now on the left side, back to Ed Van Epp. Van Epp sends it the length of the ice. This is going to be icing. Edestrand seeing his first service of the night. Touches up, but it's waved off. Kept in by Bladen. The drive is deflected wide by Dallas Smith, and now Edestrand and Dallas uh, and Terry Crisp are going up. And again, it should be for high sticking. With 13-13 left in the third period, the score is Boston 4, Flyers 1. This wolf was my grandma's problem. And this wolf, no problem at all. A good guy. Right, Rocky? And this wolf means my car gets the best. Wolf's Head Motor Oil, made especially for today's engines. Because engines are bigger, work harder, run hotter. So Wolf's Head Oil is tough, which makes everything cool. You can't knock all wolves because of one granny. Makes sense. It pays to run with the wolf. Wolf's Head Motor Oil. Ask your grandfather. Strand on his first shift gets the penalty for high sticking as does the Flyers' Terry Crisp. Strand, 15 penalty minutes and Crisp just four. 30 penalties in the game, 17 to Philadelphia. On the faceoff, controlled by Boston in their own corner, Dallas Smith checked into the backboards by Bill Clement, forcing another faceoff to the left of Jill Bear. Flyers going with Clement and Nole with Bladen and Van Imp. Gene, uh, I'm going to recheck. I have a, a total of 27 after two and five more called in this period. I got 31. Well, we'll see. Let me check, Don. Bill Clement on the faceoff for the Flyers against Richie LeDuc. LeDuc kicks the puck loose, checked tightly by Nole, gets the puck back to Dallas Smith. Smith takes a check from Nole, and here comes Dave Forbes, and we got a slashing call, and I believe it's against Dallas Smith of Boston. And the penalties just continued him out. Well, let's see here. Oh, well, we had seven, 16 in the first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in the second. I had a total of 11. I'll check it. You're right. 31. All right, Dallas Smith picks up the penalty. The 15th for the Bruins. And the 32nd call by Dave Newell. And the Flyers once again have a four skaters to free edge, this time for a minute and 45 seconds. That's the time remaining on the penalties to Edestrand and Chris. Again, a golden opportunity if the Flyers can muster forces. Faceoff will be just inside the Boston line. Clark with Barber on the faceoff. Or taps it off the backhand back to the fire zone. Tom Bladen cuts inside of his line. Speeds up on the left wing to Clark coming back. Clark picks up speed as he hits the red line. Cuts the outside, but blocked off by Al Sims, and it's all the way back to the Flyers' corner on the far side of the rink. Lonfrey has it behind his own net. Lonfrey feeds ahead for Bill Barber. Flyers trail 4-1. Barber across the Boston line. Drops it off for Bladen. Bladen through a screen. Great save, Jill Bear, as he just picked up that shot at the last instant. I think Blade would have preferred to go lower along the ice to the corner, but shot up high into Gilbert's pads. And uh, may well have been that he just didn't have that high area to shoot at as there were men screening on both sides. Good drop pass. And there was Sims and there was Orr. And Clark was in front. And the puck didn't get down enough so Clark he could get a piece of it. 127 left on the penalty to Dallas Smith as now Dave Newell is going over to the penalty bench. And he's talking there as we have uh, Pavlich and uh, D'Amico over there. And they're checking the penalty clocks. 
That show 112 remaining on the, the calls to Chris with Philadelphia and Ed Estrain of Boston and 127 on that to Dallas Smith. And uh, it appears to be correct. 1225 uh, remaining in the third period, 4 1 Boston. Gene, on an average night during uh, midwinter, a skater will lose uh, 10 to 12 pounds. It would be interesting to find out just how much they might shake on a day like, uh, or a night like this. Very warm night in Boston. And exceedingly warm here at the Boston Garden. Face off to the right of Jill Bear. Clark trying to dig it loose right in front, but cleared out of the way by Al Sims to the corner. And Orr clears the length of the ice. And Orr again continues to be a thorn in the Flyers' side. Even in losing, he's been a thorn. Now it's Clark weaving his way across the line. Drops it off on the right wing to Lonsbury. Back to Clark in the corner. Clark looks. Looking for the open man, the Bladen. Bladen, the drive deflected wide, and Orr takes the rebound. He's been cat quick tonight. And Orr just clears down the left lane the length of the ice. Flyers have just not been able to sustain an attack all night. Bladen behind his own net. Feeds ahead for Lonsbury. Barber right alongside him. Lonsbury gives him skating room. Now Lonsbury tries to split the defenses upended and loses the puck in the process. And Orr takes a check from Bladen as he gets the puck back to the flyer zone. Chris Benetistrand will be out in 12 seconds. Dallas Smith in now 24. Barber through center ice. Across the line. The shot. Great club save. Actually got a piece of it and enough to deflect it to the corner. Comes out to Bill Flett. The drive. Knocked down in front by McLeish. As the Flyers are at full strength now. Puck kept in at the left point. DuPont, the drive blocked off by Vadney, and he plays it to center ice. Shepard playing the body, slows Chris down. Looked out, here comes Edestrand. Edestrand pulls up Jordan, loses the puck. Chris sends it ahead for McLeish on the left lane. McLeish upended by Cashman, and back come the Bruins. Shepard from center ice, stopped by Perron. Dave Schultz starts out. Schultz slowed down by Cashman. Here's Hodge closing. Esposito back to Hodge. Stand on the shot. Hodge puts it behind the flyer net. Jimmy Watson slowed down by Cashman. Gets his pass off to Schultz. Now it's Schultz with McLeish and Flett. Schultz across to Flett. On the backhand. Deflected by McLeish's skate into the corner. And the Bruins get control. Up comes Vadney through center ice. Gets around DuPont. Someone dropped a broken stick. Here's O'Reilly out front. Esposito can't get a shot away. Down goes Jimmy Watson. Puck comes out to Vadney. Vadney puts it in the Flyers' corner for Cashman, the right wing corner. Cashman to O'Reilly deeper in the corner. He's tied up by Kendra Chuck. And now Jimmy Watson. And we've got a stoppage in play. Dave Newell almost got that whistle up as DuPont was working on Esposito, but uh, it just bordered on the penalty, and then he dropped off as uh, both were giving each other pretty well. Uh, a Bruin game all the way, Don. They lead it 4-1. to one. The Flyers, if they could have made a move after the Bruins scored a power play goal at 40 seconds of the period, could have done so when they had four skaters to three edge twice and really were only able to get uh, mild shots on Gilbert. And, uh, the Bruins are coming on and owning the hockey game. 9.43 left, third period, 4-1. to one. Thus far, they put three strong periods together, which is what they haven't done in the prior four games. Flyers controller Jimmy Watson comes out from behind his own net. Bill Clement leading the play, but it's broken up by Dallas Smith. Smith challenged by Millet. Now it's Barber across the line. Taken down by O'Reilly, and O'Reilly's going to be going off. It's going to be for a hooking, and with 9.23 left in the third period, the score is 4-1 Boston. Decatur Income Fund, a way to invest, a way to put your money to work. Decatur Income Fund is a mutual fund investing for current income without undue risk to principal. For a free prospectus, see or call your securities dealer.
16th penalty of the game for Boston of 33 called by Dave Newell. O'Reilly for hooking at 10:37, and again the Flyers with a power play have an opportunity to cut into that three goal Boston lead. Four to one the count. Barber went in on that right side apparently had a man or two in front of the net but O'Reilly took him down. Face off will be in the circle to the left of Gilbert Clark drawing with Shepard. He goes back to the right point Bladen trying to control the puck puts it to the backboard but cleared out of the way by Gilbert. Top of the dasher Shepard tied up kept in by Bladen. Bladen to the left point Barber gets a shot away but it's taken away by Marcotte and cleared to center right. Bladen circles at the flyer line up the right wing for Clark. Clark keeps it on its way. Gilbert lets it go to the left wing corner. Mark out of McLeish go for it. Back to Barber. Left point. The shot. Tip and attempt was. Score. It hit the back of the net. The net falls, but on the wrong side. McLeish centering pass can't get it through. As Gilbert comes up with a couple of key saves right there. Bladen taken down by Marcotte. And Marcott gives an extra tap on the back of the head with his stick as now it's McLeish coming out with Clark across the line. Clark looking for the open man. Feeds across to Bladen. He can't, can't keep it in the zone. It comes back to center ice. Bladen looks tired. Now it's Jimmy Watson along the near side. With no lay. No lay takes the pass. Closing. Tries to return it to Jimmy Watson. Loose puck now controlled by Vadney. Now it gets, he's broken up by Clark, puts it to the backboard for Clark. Delay waiting out front. Again broken up by Vadney. This time Vadney wants a stoppage of play and gets it. But credit to the Bruins, who have had the opportunity all night to kill penalties against the Flyers and Philadelphia's and then able to come up with one power play goal. In fact, one to O'Reilly in the first period resulted in the first goal of the game. The shorthanded goal by Shepard, and that may have set the tone of the Bruin effort. Don described the full 60 minutes, or at least so far, 52 minutes and two seconds. And they've controlled the hockey game, leading it 4 to 1, 7.58 remaining in regulation play. And again, we're having a stoppage for a repair to the ice to the uh, right of Gilbert and also to Gilbert's equipment as he just sits into the crease. We've got a young gentleman, a very tiny gentleman in a Bruin outfit. Looks like a little teddy bear out of the Ringling Show, and he's walking around the first row and getting who's Oz. Now they're beginning to sing here like they did in New York, and I don't know what they're singing, but God bless America. God bless America. Well, the Rangers did that the last time they played in New York. An interesting point, Jane, uh, that was uh, made by Ron Andrews in his game notes. Only once in the last five years has the home team won the playoff uh, clincher. It's been on the road four out of the last five. Oh, there they go like New York. They want Schultz. Flyers trail 4-1. Boston's been in command most of the way. Puck goes all the way back to the Flyers' corner. Jimmy Watson on it. Watson harassed from behind by first Esposito, then Cashman, and it's Dupont. Dupont starts out the right side, gets by Esposito, feeds ahead for Nole. Nole upended by Al Sims, but Orr controls. And he drills at the length of the ice. O'Reilly will be back in five seconds. Jimmy Watson behind his own net. O'Reilly is back. The Bruins are back at full strength. Watson, his pass is knocked down at the Boston line by Hodge. Hodge using his size and reach, backhands it to the Flyers' backboard. Nole tied up by Hodge, and we've got a face-off this time in the Flyers' zone. Down to 7.07 left in third period play. You had to pick up three stars right now. Two of them would have to be Orr and Shepard. Orr with two goals and an assist. Shepard with a goal and two assists, but also they've killed penalties, they've won face-offs, and Orr, as he is wont to do, control the pace of the game, and he skates off down to an ovation. 7.07 remaining in third period, 4-1 to one Boston. I would have to say this is the best game of the series that Ken Hodge has played as well. Face-off, back to Vadney, his shot is taken away by Clement, and Seleski clears it to the backboard. Cashman tries to center it, but it's gloved by Perron, and he holds on. After two periods of play, the shot figures were 26-17 Boston, and they led 3-1. They've added one more here in the third period, a power play effort by Hodge. Esposito, Hodge, Cashman for Boston. Clement 
along with Schultz and Seleski for the Flyers. Vadnay keeps it in. His shot stopped by Perron. Hodge digs in the corner. Cashman checked off the puck by Clement. Clement trying to get it loose and can as Hodge goes in and it's tied up for another faceoff. Well, the Flyers are near the uh, record for penalties by a team in the game. Uh, Bruins and the Leafs hold that at 20. They have 17. Unless they have a good uh, Donnybrook near the end of the game here, the penalty record for both teams in the game may be safe. That's at 38. And there are 33 been called so far. 6.47 left. 4-1 or 2. Hodge and Shepard. The only goal for Philadelphia by Billy Clement. Fires control the faceoff. Joe Watson behind his own net. Starts out the left side. Feeds ahead for Schultz. Schultz now on the right wing. Had, two men had him lined up, but Schultz got out of the corner. Now gets across the Boston line. Behind the net. Checks Vadney off the puck. Centering pass. Collick's shot is wide to the glove side. Clement can't dig it loose. And LeDuc is checked by Collick. Here comes Dave Forbes. Forbes pulls up short. Centering pass is too far for Schmatz to reach. Joe Watson sends it ahead for Schultz. Schultz broken up by Schmatz. Schultz gets it back again. Is slowed down by the former Vancouver Canuck. Schultz digs it loose. Spun around by Greg Shepard. And here we go here again. Goes Schultz and Badner. You figured that might have to come. And in comes Forbes. They all jam up in the corner. Schultz and Badney. You could break that back coming. The two of them got close to one another. Looks like Dave Newell might be calling penalties number 35 and 37. Or 36 and 37. It appeared at one juncture, Gene, as though there were two Bruins on Schultz at the same time. And they're going off. And the third man would have been Bobby Schmatz. All of these breaking out at 13.58. And Jill Bear is upset at something. And so with 6.02 left in third period play, the score once more is Boston 4, the Flyers 1. You know, sometimes being a kid can be a real problem, like with Tasty Cake, for instance. They tell you Tasty Cakes are made with great tasting things like milk and butter and eggs. They tell you they're loaded with kids' favorite flavors like chocolate and butterscotch. They even tell you they're fresh baked daily. The only problem is they can't tell you which one to choose. Tasty Cake. All the good things wrapped up in one. Just like kids. And Schmatz for a punch at Schultz and was separated. And he took a, a Schultz took a just a big smile because Schmatz missed it like a pitcher misses a curveball. And uh, uh, Don, you called it. I'm sure Schmatz is gone on the game misconduct for the third man in. And I just wonder if he picks any more up for throwing the punch at Schultz. And he's telling him right now in no uncertain terms to get out of here. And Schmatz is pointing to his bench. And Newell is saying no to the to the dressing room. I don't know what Schmatz figures to gain uh, or what any player figures to gain to continue an argument after he's been ejected. And Newell has given him the gate, so uh, Schmatz is through for the night. 13.58, the time of his penalty. Schultz is leaving too, uh, and he's talking to the Boston bench, and they're smiling at him too. Cashman's smiling at him, as this is all a game of wordsmanship now. And psych. And so for the second time, <laughs> Schultz is escorted into the confines of the Flyers dressing room, and maybe lost in the midst of all this furor of penalties are the uh, goal statistics of the score four to one Boston and we've got two penalties going up on the board Schmaltz receives two as does Vatney and with 602 left in the third period it's four one Boston in these 
these uncertain times, you worry about where to put your hard-earned money. So Girard Bank now offers a variety of savings plans. Some have guaranteed yields, all are fast growing. Federal regulations impose a penalty for funds withdrawn prior to maturity. But if you don't, there are bumper crops of interest. Plant your money in a Girard savings plan and start reaping the harvest. We've got a lot of penalties here, and the Bruins now, it's that flurry we said, Don, that might have to come, have now tied the, uh, their own and uh, record in that held by the Leafs for penalties in a the game. They now have 20, and the Flyers have 19, and that establishes a new record for penalties in a game by both teams in the Stanley Cup game. It's now 39, the former record at 38. The reason I'm not saying anything at the moment, I'm quickly figuring and uh, writing to try and catch up here. All right, we'll give him to you. Schultz a roughing and a, and a misconduct. That may a roughing. Schmartz received the game and a uh, roughing. And so uh, we'll figure these out. Actually, the penalties are 19 apiece now, Don, as we got lost in the flurry, too. Two for Ruff and a game misconduct for Schmatz. Two for Schultz on Ruff and 10 minute misconduct. And Vadney picked up two for Ruffing. So the penalties are actually 19 apiece at this point. In this period alone, the Bruins have picked up uh, a total of eight penalties, including majors. The Flyers, four, including majors. Well, so according to my figures, the Flyers' total now is 19 penalty uh, penalties called. The Bruins have had a total of 19 also. As we continue with action, now back in. Barber up the left wing to Clark at center ice. Clark. And offside is called as Bladen preceded the puck across the Boston line. Flyer, Flyers have had no cohesiveness in their attack all night. The uh, uh, Bruins have stayed on their backs. And they've just sputtered and fumed and really had nothing much to offer Jill Bear for most of the evening. Face off outside the line, controlled by the Flyers, Bill Barber. Across the line on the left wing. Looking for Clark. Clark across for Bladen, but he wasn't as deep as Clark thought he was. Bladen's shot sails over the head of Clark, and Orr picks up the rebound. Up the right wing to center ice. Orr controlling that puck. Takes it all the way back from his own line behind his own net. Feeds out to Dallas Smith coming out the left side. Smith across the flyer line. Pulls up short on the right wing corner. Off the stick of Shepard who was breaking in all alone. Taken down and Clark's going to be going off for either hooking or cross check. Cross check is the call. Is the call. And so they'll play three aside, three skaters, for a minute and 11 seconds. And that's when three uh, players will come out. Terry Crisp, who's serving Schultz as minor. Vadney and Dave Forbes, who's serving Schmaltz as minor. Comes at 14.47, the penalty. And that does now tie a record. The Flyers now have tied it with their 20th penalty of the game. Cross-checking. Clark, a second of the period, now has 40 penalty minutes. Comes at 14.47. Gene, as I recall, that, uh, that all-time Stanley Cup record game, the uh, Bruins against Toronto, uh, old friend Forby Kennedy was involved in oh, that one. Yeah, endless number of penalties. Billy Clement coming across the line to a lot of shots. Good save, Gilbert. Loose out front and clear the length of the ice by Andre Savard. Joe Watson back in the Flyers' corner, takes it behind his own net. Watson starts out of the flyer end. Clement showing great speed tonight. Bounce uh, shot wide of the Bruins net by Joe Watson, now controlled by Boston, as Sims takes it behind the Boston net. 440 left in regulation time. Flyers trail 4-1. Dallas Smith checked from behind by Bill Clement. Puck wound around behind. Parant feeds it up to Boyd for Clement. He's broken up by Savard. To Sims, wide open, back to Savard. Saved by Parant. And now it's Bill Clement up the left wing. Clement just lifts it towards center ice where it's Dallas Smith. Smith across the line on the left wing. Drops it back to Savard. He can't handle it. Savard checked into the boards by Joe Watson. 
Puck picked up by Boris Kivichuk. Kivichuk will skate it to center ice. Cross the line. Kivichuk trying to do it alone. He's broken up by the Boston defense. Now it's Esposito. Across the flyer line. Going wide on Jimmy Watson. One has a right across in front. Now it's Hodge. Back to Vadney. Shot as the Flyers have 30 seconds left on Clark's penalty. Chris can't clear it out. Someone loses a piece of equipment. It's cleared to the corner. And Bobby Orr takes it behind the Boston net. Orr feeds up to Hodge in the right wing. Broken up by DuPont in the Boston end. Clark will be out in 10 seconds. Vadney has trouble controlling. Chris has got it. Puts it right on Orr's stick. Now it's Cashman up the left wing, broken up by Van Imp. Clark is back. The Flyers are at full strength, and this will be icing against the Flyers. Hey. And with icing called, the play will resume back in the Flyers' end as we're down to 3.05 left in regulation time. It's been Boston most of the way tonight. As for the first time in the series, they've been able to put together three strong periods of play. As Pesito on with Cashman and Hodge, Flyers counter with McLeish, Barber, and Nole. Face off to Dallas Smith. The drive is gloved by Perrot. Holds on beyond the three-second limit, says Dave Newell. And we'll have another face-off at the flyer end. Esposito against McLeish. As many of the Boston fans have already headed for the exit. Simone Delay in the right wing comes to center ice. Tries to wing it to Barber on the left side. Barber is slashed by Hodge as he skates by. Esposito puts it back in the flyer corner as the chorus of God Bless America starts again. Kept in by Vadney. To Cashman, tip and attempt goes wide. As DuPont takes Cashman down, Nole comes to center ice. Nole across the line to Barber. Shot stopped by Gilbert and he smothers it as Nole was waiting for the rebound. They sing God Bless America here at the Boston Garden louder than they sing their own national anthem. Perhaps they know the words better. The chairs go up as they conclude the first stanza. On the faceoff, a shot by Lansbury almost finds its way through, but Gilbert just recovered in time. Now it's Leduc playing the body on DuPont and not the puck. Watson taken down by O'Reilly. Now here comes Leduc to Marcotte. Marcotte tried to return the pass, but it's blocked out by Cowick. Lansbury can't clear out. Parade is out. And Watson ties up Leduc, and we've got a face-off in the fire end. Don't forget, coming up next, the Tasty Cake post-game show, so why not settle back with the Tasty Cake and stay tuned for an interview with one of the stars of the game and a closer look at tonight's game. Like Tasty Cake, it's all the good things wrapped up in one. Matt Pavlich's hair is uh, very wet from the perspiration, very matted. Looks as though he just stepped out of a shower. Face-off, controlled by the Bruins. A drive by O'Reilly is kicked out by Perrant. Marcotte feeds to the near corner to our right. Cowick cuts O'Reilly off. And Cowick and O'Reilly almost go at it. Cowick piled up an impressive number of penalty minutes with the Richmond Robins in the American Hockey League this year and was brought up to work with the Flyers uh, during the playoffs when and as needed. Marcotte drops it back to Vadney. Can't take the shot. Gets around Cowick. Across to Edestrand. Shot is wide right along the ice. Vadney keeps it in as Cowick drills Vadney into the boards. Now it's Longbury. Behind the flyer net to our right. Feeds ahead for Bladen. Lobs a pass ahead for Seleski. Seleski winds it around the boards as 
Edistrand holds Seleski off as now the Bruins regain control. Vadney gets around Seleski. 120 left in third period play. Bounces one in on Perron. Almost misplayed it. Way to the corner. And now Cowick is going at it with Carol Vadney. Vadney had the earlier going. Now Cowick is coming back strong. Cowick trying to get his right hand loose. And now it's LaDuc and Tom Bladen going at it. LaDuc getting the better of the going in that one. Now Bladen is coming back. Bladen had his, had his right hand freed and was pumping uppercuts. Bladen's still going at it. Marcotte spinning lines free around. O'Reilly has a hold of DuPont. Cowick and Vadney have finally separated. As Pavlich has a hold of Cowick. I somehow got the impression that as Cowick kept bumping, that he wanted to go. Frustration, perhaps. But he loves the bodily contact. Cowick and Vadney were the first two. Then it was Bladen and LaDuc. LaDuc's already headed for the Boston dressing room. with a 1-13 uh, left in the regulation play with the Bruins holding a 4-1 lead. Vadney is being led toward the Bruins gateway. And Cowick and Bladen head for the Flyers gateway across the way as Seleski would like more of Vadney. But D'Amico finally leads him off and the gate is closed as all of this broke out at 1847. And again, multiple penalties. Vadney and Leduc for Boston, Bladen and Cowick for the Flyers. Here's the announcement, let's pick it up. fighting is the call to all four. So that's the tenth penalty of the period for Boston, the seventh for the Flyers. And we haven't had a chance to total up the minutes, but we will at our first opportunity. But this uh, should set or come close to setting a new single game playoff record. The Flyers now are up to 22 penalties. The Bruins have 21. The Bruins in this period have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 24, 34 minutes. That brings their game total up to 78, which I believe does set a new record. And now for the Flyers in this period, 2, 4, 6, 16, 18, 28. Their game total is 68 minutes. So all told, there now have been 43 penalties called. And total penalty minutes thus far, 146. So it's been one of those nights, friends. The Flyers really have never offensively and scoring-wise been in this game since the first period. The Bruins had 
many opportunities to break this game wide open in the first period and save for the goaltending of Bernie Perrant, they might have done just that. But they picked up uh, a pair of goals in the middle period, both by Bobby Orr and Hodge on the power play in this the third period. There's as much uh, or as many, if you will, altercations breaking out in the stands now as there is or have been on the ice. Okay, all set to go. Face off to the, the right of Perron. McLeish trying to skate it out. He's broken up. Savard has it. Flips a backhand around behind the net. Markov checked off the puck, but gets it up to Savard. Savard, center it pass for Markov. On a great setup by Savard, and it's five to one. Markov off the backhand. Our time of the goal comes at 18.59. For Don Marcotte, that's only his fourth series goal, but he's been a demon on defense. Savard will get an assist, and you have to go back a long way to find out when the last time Bernie Parada had five or more goals scored against him in one game. Perhaps a good time to get a bad game out of their system tonight. Here's McLeish across the line. He's upended by Dallas Smith as the Bruins come back. Edda Strand the shot. Glove save. Centering pass. O'Reilly's shot is wide as he also picked up an assist on that mark that goal. The sting seems to have gone out of the Flyers now as Perrant gets his goaltender stick back. The top part is broken. He's just got the staff left. Zaleski checked by Cashman. Here comes McLeish. McLeish half-heartedly fires on Bear, makes the save. 21, second, <clears throat> 21 seconds left in the game. Jimmy Watson from the red line. A weak shot. 12 seconds. And that should pretty much do it. If we're down to five seconds, DuPont in no hurry. And the game is over. The final score, as Jill Bear is congratulated by the Bruins teammates, Bernie Perrant is re reassured by the Florida teammates. So Bruins head for their dressing room, the Flyers for theirs. So that's the end of the game. The final score, Boston 5, Flyers 1. We'll be back with a wrap-up right after these words. Here's Orr. Over to Shepard. Back to Orr. out and Cashman puck bounces over the line and Fletch moves in on the right side. And Gilbert throws the puck, follows up and scores. Bill Clark drove in the rebound after Fletch made the stop after uh, Gilbert. Houston to Orr, two on one with Fletch in a moment, two on two with Shepard. In for Shepard. Hit the ball, over the back end, scores, Bobby Orr on the rebound of the Shepard shot. And the Bruins lead it two to one on the Bobby Orr backhander. Credit and fine play by Johnny Busick getting this puck up through center ice to Orr. Here's the pass to Shepard. He cuts in for the shot. Top corner, short side. Perron once again a magnificent stop, but he couldn't get back quick enough to grab that backhander by Orr. Moving well and deep. Is upended by Van Epp. The puck goes back to Orr, moves in. Bobby Orr! Goes it for the pass to Perron to make it 3-1. Bobby Orr! This is what we call second effort. 
He got upended by Van Ant. Now watch this right here. Passing it out, Hodge, as Smith goes after it. And here's the drive. And a Bernie Perron eluded this one. He didn't quite make the play on that one. In the Busick. Back to Shepard. Drive. Score, Kevin Hodge. Hodge took it home and lost the lead. Four to one on a power play goal. Now Boston four. Philadelphia one on the power play. Hodge from Busick and Shepard. Little Greg Shepard playing that left point. A real solid drive along the ice. Todd standing in front, just changed the direction, and Boston takes the commanding 4-1 to one lead. Clayton going at it. Oh, gee, LaDuke, several good blows in there on Clayton. And Clayton's still in action. Uppercutting now as LaDuke hangs on. But he got some quick ones in. Bard moves it in the corner. O'Reilly lands atop McLeish, kept him down, and Marcotte scores on the back end of the Bard. To make it five to one. And here's the centering pass. Savard to Marcotte. Well, here's the backhand shot. Looked like it went off the right or the left skate, rather, to Bernie Perron into the net. And it's now 5-1 to Boston. There it is. Oh, I guess it was the right skate. The talk now was the pressure's on the Flyers. If the Bruins can win number six in Philadelphia, they will surely take number seven in Boston. Pass along the